Today what we're going over is defensive organization, obviously in our own defensive part of the field, our defensive third of the field. I'm giving this example here with two lines of four, so this is kind of a 4-4-2 type of example. The forwards, they, they might be pressed on the center back, you might have one drop in over here. It depends on kind of your strategy, but let's just deal with these two lines of four right now. Ball is located here. As you can see, we have good team compactness. Everybody is shifted over to this side of the field. The one thing that's worrying here is the space in here. That is prime real estate. Most goals are created and scored from here, a box on top of the box. Most assists come from this area. Out wide, people think that many assists come from out wide not even close to as many that come from on top of the box. So how do we fix this? You, this is a way, if, you, if you're a fan of a Rigosaki and things like this, this is kind of Italian zonal 442 defending. It's kind of how it's taught. But now we don't want a striker sitting in, in the gap here. So instead of having this midfielder here, we're simply going to put him here, right? So now he's taking up the space in between the lines. And essentially what happens is, if you had a striker right here, sitting in between the lines, if this is a striker, the center back is gonna have to step up. If the center back steps up, it leaves space to be exploited. And the other striker can make the run, he'd still be on sides. So you do not wanna have the center back being pulled out of position in between the lines. So again, he would come back, fill this valuable space here. Now that's in a 4-4-2. There's other ways to defend. So let's just say that we dropped into five in the back. Again, in five in the back, this could be a 3-4-3, this could be a 3-5-2. All we simply did was drop our wingers. The wingers drop in, and we have one, two, three. That's it, three across. Now we have two strikers. So preferably, this is the center back, so we leave one striker high. The other striker, and we're going to split the field here again. One striker is going to hustle back here to help out. He can eat. It depends where the ball is. He can really come and pressure the ball from any angle. If this ball gets switched to the other side of the field, this striker now will rotate up top as this striker runs in. This is a way to keep... So otherwise, this striker would be running crazy all over the field when they switch the ball. It's a more organized way to save the legs of the striker, and you always have pressure coming from behind and helping this line of three. The only disadvantage here is this line of three has to shift over as one unit, but the advantage is you still have five at the back. And again, just being conscious of this space here, this guy could take a little deeper drop, and that space is filled. So those are just some basic concepts of, of defensive organization. Um, what I'll say to you is this, that, that was an example of a low block. That is, when you look at teams like when, when Manchester City played Bar Barcelona not too long ago in the Champions League against Messi and they dropped a line of five and then maybe a line of four in front of that and one lone striker. The problem with this is, when they won the ball, Barcelona pressed them so hard, they were never able to transition from their attacking organization. They were never to transition out, attacking transition into attacking organization. They were never able to open up the field and start to get their men up the field because they lost the ball under the pressure within two passes. So just a little different ways and, and to organize your two lines and also... The area, very important area, the box on top of the box. You have to defend this. When Jose Mourinho was at, at Chelsea, this is what he did so well. Any ball that was played in this box, they weren't allowed to turn. They weren't allowed to play forward. They got squeezed out, made to go sideways, square, or back, and usually created a turnover. From the turnover, two to three players counterattacked at speed, and that, that was pretty much the game plan. If you look at Leicester City, if you look at Antonio Conte right now at Chelsea and Mourinho at Chelsea, this is valuable real estate 
You have to be a good enough team, a technical enough team, to hit people on the break, to go forward without losing the ball, to have players who are good enough to keep the ball while going forward, attacking with two to three players. If you get there and the and it's not on and you can't have a shot at goal, obviously the team pushes up the field and now it's attacking organization and you start to work the ball around again and start to open up seams. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching the video. You can check out my blog at coachdebernardo.com. I got all kinds of stuff on that blog relating to training, cognitive training, and so forth. You could check out my actual training sessions on my other YouTube stations. One is Marcus DiBernardo that has all my training sessions. You could check out uh, the Weekly Soccer Rant. That is another YouTube station I have. Instructional books. All my books are available on Amazon.com and SoccerSmartTraining.com.